You can't fix a problem with the same thinking that created it. His name was Albert Einstein. Thank you. Monitoring every step. I can remember it like yesterday. The house loud with both older brothers and sisters arguing over toys. My second older brother holding matches in his hands with an evil grin on his face as he sits alone. You can hear the sounds of matches being struck on the kitchen floor and then going out with the smell of combustible mixtures sent in the air. Not a loving scene, and by no means. The sight of my brother finally getting a match to stay lit, deciding to throw the lit match into my direction was unforgettable. The end result, the whole house was set ablaze. The room being brightened by fire spreading throughout the house. The sounds of constant popping and the rise in temperature that destroyed items as well as my childhood. And if it wasn't for my returning mother, I would not be here today. A burn mark on my lower back that has left me with constant flashbacks and trust issues. At this time, I was two years old being monitored by my siblings instead of my mother. This type of monitoring created a negative in my life and set the tone for future, set the tone for future understanding. As I look forward in my life, I come to monitor my thoughts and experiences. It was August 18, 2010, and as the sun beams down on my baby Afro, I watched closely as to where I was walking, trying not to trip over a Hispanic man who happened to be chained from the ankles connected to mine. It was the date of my, it was the date of my sentencing for the charges, attempted murder with the personal use of a firearm. The court's decision, 15 years with 85 percent to do by way of plea bargaining. Me being the youngest of five kids and the only sibling to do such time was an embarrassment. As I was being sentenced, I could just envision the chaos that the media and movies had portrayed prison to be, which keeps watchers aware of the closely monitored. Reality has set in only to bring constant awareness of my future actions. This realm of monitoring or surveillance has in fact been negative since the house fire at age two. About a month after sentencing, I was sent to a reception, a prison preparing you for a real prison in Tehachapi, California. At this time, it was on lockdown due to racial writing. Of course, then, we had no canteen, television, radio, and was only let out of the cell for breakfast, dinner, showers, and medical appointments. To me, as a first-termer, being in prison felt more like a human warehouse. My identity as Kenneth Leon Wheeler was only recognized as CDC number AI5353, a violent offender. Many people can say by being on the outside looking in that prison should be designed for offenders. With that being said, my question is, do you feel that same way about those that made a bad mistake? If this is the case, think about bad mistake, hoping, think about this time when you had made a bad mistake, hoping for forgiveness, but were never but we're never punished. The point is and will always be that we are humans and humans make mistakes. I forgave my brother for the traumatic experience in the house fire. The mistake that I've made has put me into a realm of surveillance, a small society in which many people are monitoring you, studying you, and in most cases, envying you. While in Tehachapi, I learned to adapt to a social norm, which was violence and suppression of emotion. Different rules in which contributes to structure, same as in the military. This sense of structure has left me to, has helped me to discipline myself and began structuring my personal life. Despite many watching me, I felt there was a need for a change. This was set aside from the criticism, dehumanization and punishment, both physically and mentally. After nine months in Tehachapi State Prison, I was sent to a main line in Kalinga, California. This prison was Pleasant Valley State Prison, known for valley fever, and designed to trap the man's mental and convert an individual's defects into a stronger one. This is so that by prisoners being closely monitored once released can contribute to the recidivism rate. Imprisonment in California is a norm to those who enforce this harsh, unconstitutional way of dehumanizing individuals who've committed a violent or nonviolent offense. 
This is to monitor your every move and to correct what many prison officials consider disobedience. Therefore, from experience, I can say, doing the right thing in prison can be considered disobedience. If I go to school or work, by being monitored by certain prison officials, I can be subjected to harassment, same as in the community, by being black while driving. After doing 10 months in Pleasant Valley State Prison, I was transferred to Donovan State Prison in San Diego, California. Is it better, you may ask? Well, it depends on what you consider to be better. The food, the mattress, the vibe on the yard, even the program. I can personally say that what you put in can determine what you get out. I see day in and day out, everyone is being monitored and judged by their actions. Going back to my childhood, I was being monitored the most by grown-ups due to being sneaky. Though I have was caught just about every time, I tried to find ways on becoming sneakier. In prison, it doesn't work always work like that as if as you would want it to. And so that brings me to the realization of doing the right thing. I am proud to say that many have watched me do to the negative things I was doing. However, now I am being watched doing positive things such as giving speeches, college in the second chance Pell Grant program, music, poetry, you know, just being better. When I think about being watched, I envision being watched all along the watchtower becoming successful. We are all being monitored right now as we speak. We are watching each other as so in order to direct our paths and doing what is right and what is wrong, whatever fits your beliefs. When you think about it, those of you who are listening to my words are monitoring me now. This is taking place mentally to better understand my story as well as my actions. In this world, we are forever monitored to learn about our interactions, the who, what, when, where, and how in our day-to-day -day lives. Just imagine being the only person on a stranded island. Do any of you believe that you are not being monitored? If so, we can make a bet that some living thing is monitoring you, whether it's fishes, birds, those in airplanes, you even monitoring yourself within the mind. To relate all of this to prison, I know that I am under surveillance at all times. I just know that the surveillance, the monitoring that really matters is my surveillance. The camera eye that I behold in order to watch for danger, deceit, love, and most importantly, the future that brings desire. As a watch society by the government, we are within a bubble, so to speak as a camera eye by the government, who happens to be the real neighborhood watchers, monitoring phone calls, behaviors, beliefs, other states, even in space. This is what has brought me to write in this fashion of expression, to shed light on how monitoring has either a positive or negative impact, and sometimes both on a person's life, whether it's mentally, physically, as in prison for me, and spiritually. I can say today that as I strive towards success, I monitor my own behavior responsibly, all along the watchtower in this prison life of a temporary home.